Hi there, Sanna here again. Um, this is the second part of the Glimmer Mists and On Wood series for my Glimmer Mists video series for 2018. Um, I'm going to start with this um, regular building wood. I don't know, I checked the name and I'll add it to the video when I know how, how, this, how you call this wood in English. Um, I've added a little note to, I'm going to use both pieces first. I've added a little note for myself. that So this is a paintbrush with air dry. And this would be the paintbrush brush with the heat gun. And on the other side, when this side is done and dry, then we are going to test the um, spray bottle, directly sprayed, um, with the heat gun and with air drying to see what's the difference if, if you get different kinds of results with a paintbrush or with direct spraying. And I haven't treated these wooden, wooden pieces with anything um, because I want to see what, how, what Glimmer Mist does to the pure wood. If you would add gesso on top then the result would be totally different but since this is just to show that you can mist and color wood for your craft projects I want to do the plain untreated wood for this this video. Maybe later I'll add some um, short videos with different uh, kind of media on wood and then put Klima mist on them. But for this video I'm going to use just the plain wood. So we'll start with the paintbrush. And what I've done is I've added into my uh, watercolor palette cover because I couldn't find my watercolor uh, palette, <laughs> I've added the four colors that I've been using throughout the video series. So I've got a um, little bit of color there. Then I've got my uh, paintbrush. And then for misting, I think I still have enough to treat these uh, pieces and then I need to change the bottles. But we'll start with the paintbrush and air dry. And this side should be then the paintbrush with the heat gun. So let's just, I, I don't know, let's take, and I've got my paper towel here and a little bit of water to clean the brush in between. I'd say we'll start with the lighter colors. So I'll just grab the gold and start applying the gold here and let that air dry on its own to see if there's a difference it, it probably would be, I think at least, that, that the difference will be that the color concentration will be stronger if you add um, it from the spray bottle, but I could be wrong. So the next, let's do the heat gun part. Let's take the same color, same area, to, to keep it as, as similar as possible. And grab the color here with the paintbrush, put it over here. Okay, so we are done. And then I'll just quickly put this aside so that it doesn't get affected and heat this with the heat gun a little bit to see if there's any difference when that other piece is dried and I can compare those to see what happens. So just make sure this dries out. So immediately what I see is that I have such a gorgeous glimmer on top of the wood. I hope it stay also stays there. That looks absolutely beautiful. So you get a little bit stain. So this is just a light touch of, of yellowish gold with a lot of glimmer in there uh, when you add it directly to the wood and this being the lightest color might also have something to do with that. And next I'm going to take a dark color to see if there's any difference. So I think we are about dry. So that's the, I don't know if you can see, see that area there. There's a lot of glimmer in there. Looks absolutely beautiful. And it's a little stain, so you've got a golden stain on the wood. And this one is drying on its own. At the moment it's still darker because it's still wet, but we'll see how that looks like when it's all dry. So let me clean my brush. 
a little bit at least and then let's take a dark color to see the contrast. So I'm putting this here to keep the other one clean and then add the icicle blue over here and since the color is translucent you will still see the wooden structure throughout through the color so that would be the icicle blue applied with the paintbrush and you can see the really nice wooden structure in there and you get a really strong stain. Let's leave that to air dry, put it aside again and then do the other one and then quickly heat it up with the heat gun to see if there's a big difference. So depending on what kind of brush you use, you can you can treat the surface quicker because I have I chose a really small brush, so it's not quite the perfect tool for this experiment, but never mind. Okay, so let's heat that. So far, it looks the same. What immediately happens if you heat it at least at this point is that you immediately see the glimmer in there. It shows up. It turns, it kind of gathers on top of the wood. And when it's all dried, then I'm going to try it with my finger if, if any of the glimmer comes off or if it actually stays there. Because if it would come off, you would need to put a fixative on to keep it in place. But we will see what happens. And remember when you're working with a heat tool, it gets really hot. Just so you, you have to be careful with your fingers that you don't burn them or any surrounding areas or any plastic uh, pieces or anything. So always check your surroundings first and and keep your fingers quite far away because th at this, this distance I st can still feel the heat So on my on my finger there. So I think this is dry now. I really like the color. This is how it looks like and there's that shimmer again. So there definitely is some mica on top of the wood. And I've got still got clean fingers because we just started. So let me try that. Okay, a little bit of glimmer comes off, but not much. Let me take another finger and go over that area. Well, it's hardly anything that comes off. You still you still have a lot of shine there. Um, let me see if I can catch that there. Can you see that? And it's still there. So that would be the paintbrush results. Dry with heat dried with heat gun, and this is the one that needs to air dry. It's not quite dry yet, but what I can see already is that on this piece I've got this gorgeous glimmer on top too. So probably at the end they will look exactly the same. So let's leave those to dry and I'll be back when that's dry and then move to the next uh, side and try it with direct spraying. Uh, while that's drying I could actually go and add the other colors because I already prepared them. Nah, let's leave it like that. That should be enough. You get the idea of a darker and lighter color there. So let's leave that to dry and I'll be back soon. Okay, so I'm back again. Um, it's not completely dry yet, but almost. So it's dry enough to turn it around. And this one is already completely dry because we used the heat gun. And for this part, I'm just going to put this watercolor brush away. And then maybe take my spray box, misting box to, I don't know, just to keep the surface, keep my surroundings clean, sorry. So let's try start with the one with the one that we are going to air dry. So I put it here because my bottles are almost empty. So I need to tilt the, the wood a little bit and I just spray some color in there and let that 
soak into the wood on its own. So it's the same color like on the other side. And then I'm going to add, let's keep it moving a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to add the gold next to it. And since the bottle is quite empty, I need to look where, where the spraying area is to get some color in there. If it's not working anymore, then I'll need to take a new bottle, I think. Oh, we'll get, we'll get there. So that's the one um, with the gold and with the icicle blue. And we'll leave this to air dry. So I've just sprayed directly onto the wood and I leave that to dry and move around a little bit. So I'll put it there. And then the next piece will be the one that I want to spray and then quickly heat set. As you can see the bottle is quite empty so it's, it becomes difficult to work with it. But we'll get there. And if the bottles are that empty like here, you can always use this last bits and pieces as a watercolor with your paintbrush so nothing goes to waste if you find it hard to spray the residue out of the bottle. If you're, if you're like me, not that patient, then that might be a, do the trick for you. So when I'm drying this, what I notice is that there are darker and lighter areas. I don't know if you can see that on the video. Uh, so the areas that didn't get that much, much uh, color in them are much lighter and then there's a stronger concentration of spray in the middle of course and you get a beautiful even glimmer in there so this one should be quite dry beautiful beautiful shine the difference is that you don't have any brush strokes there so when you're doing it with the when you're painting with the paintbrush you always get this paintbrush kind of look and when you spray you get like much more even results with the color. I can show it to you here. So this was the paintbrush dried with the heat gun. This is the direct spray. So that's a much more um, even concentration of color, stronger concentrations of color and here it's like a wash much more, looks much more like a wash and this is like I used a spray bottle to spray it, it looks exactly like that. And so depending on what kind of result you're aiming for it, that's good to know. So let's see if I can get this bottle to work for me just a little bit more. Okay, so I've got the gold in there, don't want to mix it with the, with the blue one that much. So stop, don't move, and then just heat it, immediately heat it to see what happens. And it will be pretty similar like the blue one. The color concentration will be stronger, I think. Lots more glimmer in there, a lot more even. The glimmer result is more, it's spread it all over. With the paintbrush you're obviously also moving the glimmer around looks really nice, really really nice. And I don't know if it's the wood itself but you don't have that. You still get to see the structure of the wood but it's not that obvious like on the paintbrush side. So the paintbrush enhances the wooden structure and you can see it, recognize it much better and on this piece in my opinion, it's not that obvious. You still see it, but it's not that... See what I mean? That's a paintbrush result and that's a spray. So it's totally different. There's a lot of glimmer and shimmer in here. So with when you're misting, you get lots more glimmer in there. With the paintbrush, you're moving the glimmer around. So you get a more... Not that shiny look, at least. So there's a big difference. And for the other piece, um, 
it's the same. It's still wet, so I can't t say, tell you if, if the glimmer result will be that beautiful like with the heated wood. But you still get an even result. The color is spreading really nicely on top of the wood. And this looks more like it's painted with a paintbrush. And if you're aiming for this look, then obviously this would be the better choice. And if you air dry it or, or let it, let it uh, dry it with the heat gun, that depends on what kind of end results we get here. So that would be the plain construction wood this way. And then we'll move to another uh, type of wood. And um, I'm going to add, video, uh, at the end of this, this uh, video spot, I'm again going to add the pictures of the different results so that you can compare the finished, finished results with each other. So next I thought it would be fun to see how these seeds, these pumpkin seeds, uh, work out, if they are going to fall apart or not. So I'm just going to... I still got some color here, I've got the tweezers here. So I'm going to take one seed, add it to the color and turn it around. And then just leave it to dry. We'll see how that turns out. Let's make another one. And maybe for this one we'll just heat it a little bit with the heat gun. Just need to get it all covered. Oh, that, that didn't work out that well. The previous one was nicer. But here we got an even coverage. So I'll pick that with my tweezers because otherwise I'm going to burn my fingers. And then heat it a little bit with the heat gun to see what happens oh you cannot see it okay here we are and then turn around for the other side and then turn around once more and I think it's quite hot no actually not so this is how it turned out. So you can do pumpkin seeds or whatever seeds you want to. And then you could add these to mixed media projects. I don't know how long this holds, but it's a fun experiment. So I thought I'd share it with you because I was interested. I like the form. So this would make fun details on some kind of mixed media project. And I'll leave that other one to dry on its own. This one was heat set with the heat gun. And then we'll do, oh, then we'll, I thought we'd do one in green too to see if you take a darker color what happens there. So I'm going to place this little piece here for it to dry and then we'll take another one. You just need to make sure that they are, I wash them a couple of times then I let them air dry on their own for a few days to make sure that they are completely dry so that they don't uh, start to develop mold. Well, it still could happen, but I thought that way they might hold better. So we'll see what happens here. And for this one I'm going to again use the heat gun. So it dries really quick. And it seems to stick to the surface quite well. Not on all areas, but I, I think that's just a problem because it's it's a little bit, it's not even, the surface is not even, so the color rolls away from some areas and gathers on others. But it's an interesting result again. So this is the, oops, there's a nice glimmer there too. So these are quite interesting. Can you see that? There's a nice shine in there too. So we'll leave that to dry there. So by heating it I get a lot stronger color than, than on this one that is just drying on its own. So there's a big difference to be seen. i leave these to be missed it later. I thought this was a fun thing to show you that you can think a little bit out of the box. 
and try new things. So next I've got this uh, plywood uh, wood um, veneer pre-cut um, piece that I'm going to color with my paintbrush and let's add some green to the top part and you can add really color concentration so you, so you basically don't paint it you just dab the color into those areas so that it can really soak in and work itself onto the wooden structure because if you just wipe it like this you get much lighter results like here that part is much darker and that one is a little bit lighter because I just wiped over it with the paintbrush and if I go over it again and add like stronger splotches of color there I will also get really green tree top areas with a lot of glimmer there and then I could um, go over it and heat it with the heat gun to make it dry a little bit faster So that's the result with a lot of shine and shimmer and glimmer in there. It's a beautiful tree top. And then I, I ran out of the golden tone, but I'm still going to grab some from the, directly from the bottle. So you just basically open the bottle and grab some color from there and add it to the tree trunk. And on this area, I'm just going to blend the colors with each other. I'm not very precise because this is just an experiment. If I would be working on a, on a project I might consider using other colors. But this will be a nice starting point even as it is. And then let's heat that to make it dry a little bit faster so that we can get some results. Wood, is, wood needs a little bit more drying time than paper, I think, because it soaks into the wooden structure a little bit more. So this would be the tree trunk. I hope I can tilt it in the way that you can see the shimmer and glimmer in there. So there definitely is some there. Love the tree top, top there. It's a nice little detail for a mixed media project to come. Okay, so that was the tree. I think it's plywood. And let's take a darker color. So that would be also pre-cut wood into a shape. And let's try and put some... What, what should we put? Let's put pink on it. Mix the glimmer, the mica in there, and then just add some color. And I'm using a paintbrush here because this is a little bit more detailed piece. So I want to make sure that every single area gets a strong concentration of color. So that's it. And should we leave this to air dry? Yeah, we'll leave it as it is and then I'll take a picture when it's done. So I've got plenty of color going on there. A little, it's still like swimming, the surface is swimming with glimmer mist. I'll leave it to dry and then I'll show you how it looks like when it's all dry. So some of the pieces dry on their own and some we just heat set with the heat gun. And then I've got these fun little details, these round pieces that you can use for whatever. And you can miss them 
with the glimmer mist directly. Let's make one like that. So let's take a pink. And since this color is almost empty, I'll just tilt this a little bit and add a little bit color in there. Make sure all areas are misted and then try to keep it quite even so that the color goes everywhere. So you can tone and alter all kinds of wooden chipboard wood veneer pieces. Works really well. We'll leave that to air dry and then we'll take another one and let's do, let's make this green because I think green we didn't use yet. Oh no, let's take blue. So I'm just opening the bottle and putting my brush directly into the color and adding quite a strong layer of glimmer mist on top and it immediately absorbs into the wood and you see the wooden structure in there. If you don't like that, you can let it dry a little bit and then go over it with an other layer so there's much more color on top of that piece. And I'll just test how that turns out and then I'm going to heat that a little bit. Ah, stay there. To help it dry a little bit faster, we have the pink one to see the air dry result. So you can also pick this up with the tweezers to keep your fingers safe. So you can go much closer to the wood with the heat tool to make sure that all areas get are going to get heated. See now we have, since we have two layers of, of color in here, the wooden structure is not that strong anymore. You can still read the words, but you've got a beautiful, rich blue color going on there. And you could also treat the areas around this circle with the paintbrush to get them, make them blue too, but for this particular video that's irrelevant in my opinion. And then let's add the green here because we still have some green here and let's do just a little bit, just a, a slight layer so that we can see the wood structure in there. So that would be just a light wash and we'll leave that to air dry. And then for last but not least, let's do one more in pink, again using a paintbrush and grabbing a lot of that mica from there and then just adding a beautiful tone to this piece too. So this would be the lighter version, just one layer with a paintbrush and you see the wooden structure. And this is the one treated twice with lots of lots of lots of color, so that there's a big difference. And we'll heat set this with the heat gun, so that you can immediately see the difference between a stronger layer of glimmer mist on wood and a lighter one. And it adds a really even uh, tone to this circle and the coverage is really nice. You still see the, see the wooden pattern in there and this would be a strong color. Like I said, this was treated twice and then heat set. So depending on what you're aiming for, there's a big difference. Okay, so next, what do we have? We still have some circles. We could do one in gold so that we have all colors for my um, previews of the pieces. And you can even use, let's try this, this we didn't try yet. You can even use this pump spray piece as a paintbrush. It's a little bit tricky, but if you ha don't happen to have a paintbrush around, you can treat small areas like this too. 
So I'm just adding a little bit gold here. So that's it. And I'm I think I'm going to leave that to dry on its own. So that would be gold on wood. It's still wet, so you don't, you can't see that much of a result yet. But it's a light shimmer in there. It's a it's a light shade like a wash. So let's leave that to dry. And then um, you can do all kinds of wooden pieces. So this would be, these are wood veneer feathers. And I think we're going to do a blend here. So let's add first a little bit pink here, here and there. And then go over with the green one and let them mix a little bit to see what happens. Probably not the best color choice I just made, but it will sh for sure look interesting when it's dry. And we'll see what happens with the colors when they mix. It looks really artsy already. So that would be one possibility to, to add several colors on, on the wooden pieces and let them mix together. Just maybe considering what colors to use so that you don't get dirty mixtures or ugly combinations so that maybe go with the blue and the gold so that you get a little bit green in the middle. So let's do this one with the gold. No, let's start, yeah, let's start with the gold because it's a lighter color. I don't have to be so careful with my brush. And I'm adding a lot of glimmer there. As you can see, and then next I'm going to take the, the blue. These are almost empty so I'm not being very careful with the bottles or the colors getting mixed. And here I'm just using the pump spray piece as it is to mix some color in there. And that, that will result in interesting effects when it's all dry. But it looks really beautiful. Don't want to touch it to move the colors around too much. So I'm just going to carefully lift it up so that you, that you can see what happened here. Beautiful. And then imagine adding some glitter in there or some stamping or some gesso or some pastes or even acrylic colors or drawing with the pen. Beautiful. Lovely results. Okay, and then we have this banner here. And this is chipboard. So this is not pure wood. This is actually chipboard. But I thought it would fit into the wood section. So let's make this. We still have pink here. So let's just color this pink. And since the surface of chipboard is different to wood, also the color reacts differently and, and gets absorbed into the chipboard piece qu really quickly. So we'll leave that to dry. And clean a little bit the mess on the working surface. And then you can do clothes pins because they are wood too. You can color them to match your project. This has a little bit gold in there. So I think I'm just going to do the, the sides to add just a little bit tone to make the resist area show a little bit better. So I'll just do this part here and add some pink here and let that dry. So I've got some interesting details on, on this particular piece. And then for the other side, let's just leave that to dry a little bit and flip it over and add the green on the other side. You can even add just a little 
tad of color. So this is like a shade, like a, I don't know how to call this, but it's just a, a slight um, tone in there, not much color actually at all. Or you can grab a little bit more and dab it onto the surface to get that beautiful glimmer in there and then just leave it to air dry. So this is really easy to do and a lot of fun actually too. And then we've got the lemon and I want it to be golden. I just need a little bit more of water here to clean my brush and then grab the gold here. And just add a lot of golden glimmer there. Can you see how rich that is? That will be beautiful for some type of project. So much color going on there. I just can't tilt it now because it's all wet. So we'll leave that to dry too. And then I have these small pieces here. And that's that special wood uh, that I said I'd look up the name for you. So uh, let's make that golden too. It has a different surface, so I don't know. Oh wow, that reacts to the color totally different. It's the wet fluid soaks really into the wood and it leaves a beautiful, really a beautiful golden. I just can't stop, I need to add a little bit more. Look at this. There is so much glimmer in there, so much. It's like, it's like I've added glitter glue onto that piece. Wow, that looks gorgeous. Let me see if I can lift that so that you can see. Can you see that? That is absolutely beautiful. Wow, so much glimmer in there. I didn't think that this would happen. So this truly is a special type of wood. So I've got buttons made out of this wood. And I think I'm going to treat them all with glimmer mists when I see this result. We'll see how that reacts to, you know, if I rub it with my finger when it's dry, if everything comes off, but then I could treat it with a fixative to keep it there. So leave that to dry and come back with the dry results. But it has a beautiful, beautiful shine. And then I've got these wooden spools that I can use as feet for all kinds of boxes or mixed media projects, whatever. Or add to all kinds of art projects. So let's Let's do some coloring here too. I think I'm going to make this green. And I think I'm going to mist it. I hope I can work on this surface here. The color is almost done. So I need to lift it a little bit. Okay, and by the time I'm finished with this, I'm going to be all green. But I don't mind. Okay, and then let's do the, do the top, spread it around with my finger a little bit, and let's do the bottom. So that would be my beautiful aquamarine wooden spool with a lot of shine in there too. Can you see there is a lot of shine in there too. So that turns out really pretty. I'm going to leave that there, put that there to dry. And can you see that shine in there? Oh, it's a shame I cannot save that. I think I'm going to need to save this piece of paper towel again. And my fingers. It's getting, I'm getting there. So every Monday the work colleagues are like, oh, you've been crafting again. And I'm like, yeah, I did a little bit misting again. They are already getting used to seeing me with different colors on my fingers all the time. 
So this is the piece from a kitchen tool and it's, it's a little bit worn out, it's older, it has some patina on it already, it's, it's been used a lot of times, it's been washed, so we'll see how glimmer mists stick to that piece. So I'm just going to add some, I don't know, I really like this green, so let's keep with the green and see how far we can go with that. So I'm just going to add the color in there. And since it's been used, it has all kinds of layers from washing and whatever. So it will react differently to the color, I think. But it's still quite well soaking into the wood structure. And I get a nice green shade. It's not that strong. And since this is a stick, I need to use a paintbrush because otherwise I would use up all my color and I want to save it a little bit. And I'm just turning it around and going over the areas once or twice and try to get everything covered. It works quite well actually. You get a nice light green shade in there. Not that strong, you can still see the original wooden color in there, but you get a shade. So I don't mind at all that this is looks a little bit worn out. It's a different type of color that, that this piece ends up looking like. And it will find its place on some type of project in the future. I'm sure of that. So for comparison, this is a untreated, light, uh, not used piece of wood that has no stains or no traces from, from everyday life on it. And this piece has been washed and used and washed and used a lot, lot of times. So when you add a glimmer mist on it, it will naturally look totally different. It's much darker on its own. So you get just a little bit of shade in there. So let's leave that there to dry. Close the bottle to prevent any accidents from happening. And then I've got the cork. I really don't know how this works, but we'll try. So let's take the pink. Or no, we haven't been using blue for a while, so let's take the blue one. So I've got this icicle blue and I'm going to apply it onto this piece of cork to see what happens. It actually rolls away, so not much stays on the cork piece. So you will need to add really light layers and work slowly to make sure that the color actually reacts with the cork and the cork absorbs a little bit of it. Not going into cork as easily as on wood, that's for sure. And I don't even know if it sticks to the, to the surface or if it's going to come off if I rub it with my fingers. But that's why we are doing this experimenting with the different materials. And since cork is also a wood, a tree, we'll just do a cork tree experiment. So, as you can see, if I add a lot of color with the paintbrush, it just starts to run on the surface and it's not really going into the cork piece. It's a difficult material. Doesn't want to get colored. Maybe that's why they are using it on the wine bottles. Could be. Okay. So let's do the top part. Can you see that? It just doesn't want to go in there. Once it's been 
on the surface for a while you get a little shade but it's not much actually it's not much at all and I wouldn't say that this is something really beautiful this turned out mainly just dirty but we'll see when it's dry what happens so not much happening there just a irregular layer of color on top of the cork and I don't even know if it's going to stay there or if it's if I put it here uh, and place it on, on a standing upright position if, if it's just going to run down and disappear but we'll see maybe it's because it's it's been pressed into this form that it doesn't want to absorb any color could be we could do an experiment with um, poros piece let's just color one of these cameras with the same color so that we have a comparison so I'll take the blue here and then I'll just apply some blue icicle blue onto this cork piece when it's lying down here and immediately I notice that this is a different type of surface because it seems to soak into there a little bit better not well but a little bit better so I've got the option of having more color on that piece than on this cork and this color you see it gathers on the on the bottom so it actually runs down but not the best material to work with but you can do something we'll see how that turns out when it's all dry and then um, I didn't show you this piece on my original video because I came up with this uh, after recording the first part these are uh, you know you put your glasses on this and I've got this from my father-in-law and these are have because he likes fishing and these have fish on them but for some reason he wanted to, to I think it was my mother-in-law who gave me these and um, this is a dark color so I'm going to try and use some glimmer mist on this one to see what happens because I really like the structure here and I also like the basic tone of these plates, these, these circles. So I thought we'll see what happens if I add a strong color in here with a paintbrush on a darker tone of wood and how that turns out. I could, this could be a um, have you seen these watercolor paintings that they draw a circle and add the colors in there and then they spread around and you have like a space or a moon? That kind of reminds me of something like that. So actually this could be a starting point of something really fun. And I like the tone that it's developing. It's turning really beautiful because you've got the dark wood underneath and then you have this glimmer and the blue icicle blue in there so this will be interesting I think I need to work this a little bit more when it's dry and add some more colors in there and see what happens so next let's do this chipboard piece I still have some color on my paintbrush so you can actually alter all your chipboard pieces just color them to the tones to match your, your uh, project card or whatever you're making just by adding some color in there this works really well I've done this very often and the color really stays there and you get a really nice shade and shimmer and glimmer in there so always something fun to do if you want to, to do a monochromatic project. You just need to take a chipboard and see that shine that's gorgeous and add it to the project with 
first treated with glimmer mist and you have the same tone going on throughout the project, different layers. Beautiful shine in there. Wait until this is dry. This will be really pretty. Okay. Okay, and then we've got the wooden stick, which will also, let's add some water in there, which will, it will also be easy to color. I thought I'd do something different and first treat it with a little bit water and then just add some color in there and let it spread on its own to see what happens. Could be that this looks really stupid when it's done but this is why we experiment and we'll see if that spreads around and how that turns out when it's all dry because I'm thinking it might soak into this into the wooden structure and build an interesting result on its own. Create, sorry, create an interesting result. And now I just need to be really careful when I'm moving it around not to spill the color. Okay, so go over there so that I have some areas free for working. And then the same thing goes for this type of wooden pieces, you can color them and let's take something interesting, let's do this. Now I know the name by the way, on the first video part I didn't know it and I haven't looked it up yet but I just knew I had it somewhere in my mind but just couldn't uh, remember at that moment. So this is a pine cone I think, if I'm not mistaken, so um, I think we'll miss this on a misting box to see what happens. So I'm just placing it in there. And if my bottle wouldn't be that empty this would be much easier because it's really there's almost no color in there anymore. But I still can add a lot of shine and shimmer in there. I don't want to waste anything, so I'm using it up here. And it smells like a wood. Like if you're walking in the woods, immediately when you mist it, it, it starts to smell like you're in the woods. Pretty interesting. So you get a lot of glimmer and shine in there and color. So leave that to dry or should we heat it? We'll heat that one. We haven't done that with many pieces. Okay, what happens here is that the shimmer shows up really nicely. That's really beautiful. I didn't think that this would be that interesting. Imagine you're doing a pine cone wreath for your door, like a Christmas wreath or something, or any type of pine cone decorations for your home for fall and you add fall colors or winter colors this they will that will look so pretty I think this is going to be something I'm going to be doing for next year that is so nice love this I'm, I'm glad I had a pine cone here look at that color isn't that pretty and then when you tilt it and when it's moving around you always see that shine and shimmer in there Look at that. Wow. Gorgeous. Really gorgeous. I didn't think that this would be the end result. Beautiful. And if I go over that area, well, let's take a clean finger so that we can tell the difference. Almost nothing comes off. So it actually also stays there. This was fun. This is good to know. And then next I have the domino stone here. Um, I, like I said, I think this part is horn, so I don't know how that reacts, then that should be wood. That is dark wood. So I'm going to keep with the blue color. 
<clears throat> because I think that might look interesting. Or oh, let's do one part with the dark color and the other one with the lighter one. So I'm just adding also to the areas around a little bit of icicle blue. And I think that needs to get dry with the heat gun so that we can apply the second color in there. And this is something that you are going to love because like on the pine cone, since it was a darker color of wood, you get a really, really strong glimmer in there. It dries really fast, really well. Leave that little bit to air dry. Can you see that shimmer there? That glimmer and shine. Beautiful. Really beautiful. And you can always go over the side areas again and then leave it to dry. Let's add some there and give it some heat. Beautiful. Really beautiful. And then we'll do the same with the lighter color. So let's take the gold. And I'd expect this to react exactly the same way, except that it's a really strong gold tone in there. Let's do the sides also. Just careful adding some color in there. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Okay, I need to find more old domino stones somewhere. Because that's a lot of fun. And you can see the glimmer moving in them there and and gathering on top. That is so pretty. Okay, that's it. No more heat. Look at that. That is so shiny. And even the areas around have a really nice shine. Look at this. Isn't this pretty? And since we're at it, I'm going to try what happens with this part. I'm just going to add some gold here because I still have some gold on my um, paintbrush. Nothing much happened. Then let's add some icicle blue here as it is. I don't know. We'll see if that does anything to the to the piece since it's it's bone, some kind of bone or horn. So probably will not do much. And Besides, I would be using the other side for sure, because that turned out so pretty. So I don't even mind if this doesn't get any color on it, because it's going to be hidden behind the other layer, the other side of the, of the piece. Well, you get some shimmer in there, you do. And the nice thing is that it gathers really nicely into those black areas. So if you would like to just add gold here and blue here and leave the rest untreated, that would be really nice too. Maybe I'll just wipe that off. I don't know if that works. And do that with this piece because I really like the blue dots in there. But this part, this is really pretty. And let me get a clean finger and wipe some off. Not much comes off. Really not much. So you might want to add some fixative in there, but there's not much color in my finger, as you can see. And that's really pretty. Wow. Didn't think that that would be so so much so interesting as a result okay and then I've got this hairbrush part that I um, saved and I've treated it with gesso so I'm just going to start adding 
some color in here. And let's start with the lightest one. And let's do some just random areas here and there. Let's do some gold here. And the funny thing is that the color does not stick to the surface, it disappears, it rolls down onto the other side and builds a lake under the hairbrush piece. So, not much happening there, I'm afraid. You can add some shading, but obviously it doesn't stick, stick there. I don't even know if that was gesso or if that's white paint. Could be white paint because it resists, really resists the color. So, uh, we don't need to try any other colors in here. It's, it will not work because that's not soaking into the surface at all. Maybe just a light shimmer here and there, but I'd say use untreated wood or use a gesso that I think this was white paint, so that doesn't work because it resists the glimmer mist. Okay. And then next, what do we do next? We have this natural wood piece which is untreated, so that should work. And I think I'm going to use all the colors, just add some areas here with the paintbrush, add some color on top, let them go into all these cracks and see how that looks like. And let's take the second color, that would be the pink. Totally different result, but this works really well. So, also the crack, cracks and um, holes on the wood get a really nice tone. And the cracks and holes also get all these glimmer gatherings in there. Which will, which will add an interesting detail to this, to this wood. Gold is gorgeous. Can you see that shine? That is so pretty. Look at that. So, so pretty. And then let's do some blue. My bottles are almost empty, but I'm hoping to get this done. Maybe a couple of other pieces too. And the same here. Beautiful blue tone. Glimmer goes into the wood really nicely. So I've got this gorgeous color and, and glimmer going on on my natural wood piece. And then I could add some rope and twine and cord, whatever, in there. That's pretty. This? Uh-uh. Forget it. This, yes, definitely. Beautiful, really beautiful. Look at that shine. And see all those areas where there are cracks and holes? The color really goes into those areas, the glimmer, and, and it gathers there. And you have these beautiful, beautiful shiny details in there. Lovely, really like that one. I've again cleaned my uh, paintbrush. I'm good to go and I'm going to color these. This is a chipboard circle pieces here and this is a wood, um, wor wooden word pre-cuts. And it says adventure. Um, I'm just going to add some color here. It's just random colors, one after each other and then let's treat always these chipboard pieces also with the glimmer mist. Love how it, the glimmer gathers, gathers on top of that piece. Beautiful, beautiful details. Just going to wipe this, some of this here and there just to get some of the gold 
on every single piece, clean my brush, take the next color and do the adventure word here. Mix the colors a little bit with each other. Might look interesting on a scrapbook layout for example. Let's take some summer colors and do the word with only two tones. Let that dry and then add the um, frame, color the frame at the end. And here I'm just going to mix some colors. This looks like it's it's from a jeweler. It looks like like a, like a jewel, <laughs> some kind of jewelry project. When the colors and the glimmer mix together, beautiful, really beautiful. I've got a new addiction. I'm I'm going to be doing this type of projects, adding these pieces to my to my mixed media projects. I think I can already see this going somewhere. I love how the chipboard reacts to Glimmer Mist. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful results. Really beautiful. And then let's take the next color. That would be the green. Just add some here. Maybe there, there. So you get different types of um, clima areas there, different tones. That looks really interesting. Let's do some here and a little bit there and there and then finally add the blue. So I've got all colors in there. And that looks so different to the other projects, to the other pieces I've colored, because I've mixed the colors with each other. So that looks really interesting. And here I'm just trying to add some green here, around the um, frame, onto the frame piece. And hoping it doesn't mix too much with the colors. Well, if it does, never mind. So, one more color to go. And that would be, let's add some, since this could be A lime too, let's add some green in there. Just a touch of green onto the side. So it looks more like a shaded lime. Could be a lime too. Just a little bit play, a bit win the experiments and then finally the darkest color. Let's take the blue and add some blue details there. And here, just a little bit there. Maybe some spots here and there. Oh, that looks like it's covered with diamonds. I don't know. Beautiful. Love the results here. Wait till you see these. These are pretty. So a basic shape like a circle can turn out really interesting with just something as simple as adding some glimmer in there. How fun is that? Okay, let me pick this up so that you can see what I mean. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful shine in there. Can you see that? Gorgeous. Let's take another one. It's as shiny as the other one. It's still a little bit wet, but wait till it dries out completely. So chipboard is a really good thing with glimmer mists. And there. So imagine this on top of a card. 
just as a detail. Very pretty. Okay, so we actually have left, put this aside. What we have left now is just a little piece of wood. Put this there. Have no space on my working area anymore. Oh wow, look at this. This would be fun. So I've got this dark wooden circle and if I'd add that there and put it on uh, as a centerpiece on some kind of project. That would look really interesting. Adventure wait weights or something, maybe a travel journal cover, focal point or something like that. Okay, so I've got this plywood piece here with a shiny surface. I'm going to try what happens but I'm not expecting much here. Just go over it with the blue on this side, see, since the surface is like a resist surface, it's not... The same thing happens here, like on my um, wooden piece of hairbrush piece that was uh, treated with uh, the paint, the white paint. I don't even think that was gesso, I think that was white paint. So the only thing I could add there was little areas of golden shimmer which is not much at all. If you want to add a little bit like a patina look, this might be interesting, but I was a little bit disappointed because I expected a little bit more from that. But I'll do a gesso with Glimmer Mist video for sure too, so we'll see what happens. So here the problem is the same. The surface resists the color, so it isn't soaking into that. I need to let that air dry as it is, then these areas might have some glimmer and color concentrations, but we'll see what happens. And if I do the plywood on the side, it really soaks into there immediately. Let me show that. Because that's an absorbent surface, it absorbs the color immediately. So you get a really strong color concentration in there. Can you see that? But that's not so interesting for me at the moment at least. I leave that to dry and we'll see what happens and if that wipes off if, when it's dry and I go over it with my fingers if it comes off completely or if something stays there. Just leave it as it is. And next I have the ruler but I think I don't want to color the ruler because it's a present from my son and he did all this artwork there. So we'll just leave it to that. It probably would react in a similar way like this darker kitchen tool uh, piece. So let's leave it. I don't want to him to be sad that, that mom's, mom ruined his present. So let's take a barbecue stick which is similar to this spool. So if you just add color in there, you could even, this is already so empty, it doesn't work. You could even dip that into color directly and add the color in there. So this works really nicely. You can add, you can tone them, you can add different colors in them and use bits and pieces on your projects works really nicely. As you can see, the color goes into the wood really nicely. Adds a little nice shade in there. There's a big difference. Blue and the natural tone. So that works really well. And it's also a little bit shiny, so nice results there. And then the next would be a wooden box. Um, you can color this by spraying it directly onto the wood or you color it with a paintbrush. Both ways work really well. What you need to do afterwards is you need to put some kind of uh, fixative on top, a spray fixative, because um, you're going to be opening and closing the box all the time. So what happens when you touch it all the time is that the glimmer will stick to your fingers at some point. 
and if you give it away as a present and the present owner then uses it a lot then they might not be so happy to have um, glittery fingers all the time from opening and closing the box so just good to keep in mind if you do projects like this and even if you put it on top of gesso you still would need to put some kind of fixative there because like like I said it's something you're going to be opening closing and using all the time so you will need to do something with it to stand time a little bit better but if you put it on the wall in a frame that's a totally different story so I'm just adding a little bit golden de details here to show you how you can color this let me show you a close-up this works really well so because it's raw wood it gets a really nice shine and, and glimmer in there but when it's dry and you close and open and close and open you get your fingers there and then you have these areas where, where, you, where when, when, the, uh, when you tilt it in the light you will see the finger areas, the spots there. I tried it once, that's why I, why I know that it, it's going to happen. But put a fixative on it and it works really well. So that's a really nice shine in there. And then you can do all the areas and create a beautiful present box for somebody. You can even um, color it inside, but if you're going to put something inside that you're going to eat, better not. Like candy or something and then give it away as a present. So then make sure you cover only the, the outer areas. And then we've got this wood here. So this is like um, a typical wood from a stamp block. It has the same feel to it. This for sure is going to also work really nice. Just going to add some aquamarine in there because I'm almost out of colors already. So there, let's put it here. Sorry for the interruption. I had to help my son out a little bit. Okay, um, so I'm just basically adding the color here. Let's put some stronger color into this area and then give this part just a light wash to show you the different possibilities on this type of wood. So the thinner the layer, the lighter the, eff the effect and the thicker the color layer the even the more even the end result will look like and here we have proper gesso on the side so you can also see here what is the difference between a gessoed surface wood surface and an ungessoed wood surface so that's a good example to end this video series with the wood width. So put some really thick glimmer concentrations in there and let that soak into that area there. Like that. So I'm just dabbing it in there to let it spread around a little bit. And then here just adding a little color and wiping it into the wood so my brush is almost dry and I just get a light wash. So that would be the difference here and we'll leave that to dry. Just carefully lift that towards the camera so you can see that. So that's just a light touch of color in there with a relatively dry brush and there's a lot of color going on there. And that would be the gessoed area with the green tone in there. So there's a difference too. We'll leave that to dry and I'll take pictures of that at the end of the video again, like on my previous. 
this once. Okay, so the only thing I'm left with is this kitchen tool. I think it's a shame to, to miss this one at this point because I don't know what I want to make out of this yet. So I just did this part. And the same goes for this piece. This has also a little patina on it. It's been used a lot, so it looks like it's been used. So basically it would be this type of wood. So this will have to work for these as an example. And you will see projects made with these pieces later, at some later point in the future. Okay, and I'm going to treat this barbecue stick with the rest of the green color, just to get all the green color used and to have a really nice shade on my barbecue stick. I don't know what I'm going to create with this, but then it's already been treated with a beautiful color as my starting point for whatever future project. So no color goes to waste here around here. We are using everything until the end and then the top part here also I want to have it covered all the way covered here too and that's it and it gets a really nice shine and I think I still have some color in here so I might take a little piece of watercolor paper add some water and just paint these residue residues from these bottles in there too you know, use every bit of the color, it's the same to throw that beautiful glimmer away. So that would be the barbecue stick in green and blue. It has a really nice tone to it. I can't get this to, oh here. Can you see that? Beautiful. Okay, so let's quickly go through these pieces. That's almost dry, it spread it quite nicely. Not all the way to the to the areas on the sides but I can always treat that again it has a beautiful shine in there so that was the I don't know a lollipop stick or um, ice cream stick or paint stick I don't know how you call these then I got this spool which turned out really shiny and really nice then I have the cork which in the end when it's dry now it actually has a nice layer of color in there. I was really disappointed at the moment when I was painting it, but it turned out quite nice. It has an interesting tone to it. There's uh, concentrations of color more and less, so it has a, a kind of structure in, going on in there too. Then this kitchen uh, tool stick piece that I uh, missed it uh, with the uh, colored with the paintbrush and the, the aquamarine glimmer mist. Then I've got the uh, wooden lemon pre-cut piece in two tones in gold and, and aquamarine. So it looks a little bit like lime, has a beautiful, beautiful shine to it. Then I've got the adventure vert that turned out really nice too in different tones. So the colors blended together a little bit. Then I've got this um, wooden circle piece that you can put your glasses on and um, look at that. Really like this idea. I think I'm going to use this for something. And then I've got the domino piece which turned out really beautiful. This um, chipboard piece is almost dry and it has a beautiful beautiful shine to it. And now wait till you see this is the wooden button and that's this special wood that is um, I know from my childhood from Finland I'm going to google the name and add it, add it here that has so much glimmer in there it's just it's just unbelievable and if I wipe over it with my finger this happens so I was suspecting that this might happen so some of the glimmer comes off so you will need to put a fixative on there. You will still have some glimmer in there in the in the end. You can't see that in the video, but that part is still quite shiny in real life. But better to, to work with a fixative to get nicer results. And then I've got this pine cone which just keeps amazing me. 
it turned out so pretty. It has such a nice shine to it because it's dark, It's a darker wood. So a darker wood would look interesting with glimmer mists, I'm thinking. And it's just beautiful. It's really beautiful. Then I've got the, the two-toned pre-cut wood veneer piece uh, in two colors, the tree. Really lovely. Then I've got this natural stick from the forest, from our walks, and this has so much shine in it, so much, really amazing. And it has a beautiful, beautiful structure and, and all these holes are filled with glimmer, so it's really pretty. Then I've got the feathers, the wood veneer feathers in two tones there. They look so lovely because they blend it together really beautifully. That's the fun thing about glimmer mist, they blend together really nicely. Then we have all these circle pieces and that was the darker brown pre-cut wood veneer piece. Um, it has, it was not this light, it was even darker on the other side. And I added the glimmer mist, the pink one on top and that's how it turned out when it air dries, so it's really beautiful. Lots of shine in there still. A little bit different shade like this one because, oops, because the basic tone was different to start with. So that is something you need to keep in mind. And then all this basic uh, chipboard and wood veneer pieces colored with the different tones. They turned out really nice too, as you can see. So that was the one that we missed it, that was painted with the paintbrush, paintbrush, paintbrush but two layers and paintbrush heat gun dried with one layer. So a little bit different depending on how many layers you add and how uh, much tone you add and what's the starting color of the wood. That always affects the end result too. Then we got the clothes pin. Hold on, let me get it there. And that has this little shine in there. And this has the resist surface with the pink on it that turned out really pretty. And I will need to treat these areas too because the color tends to spread around a little bit. So you will have a nicer looking result. But you can too, do like two toned clothes pins with, with this technique. And then I've got this beautiful Beautiful, beautiful chipboard pieces, circles here, that I absolutely adore, especially this one that turned out so nice. And what else, what else, what else? One more, I think I missed something, yeah, my seeds. So the seeds turned out really pretty. This was the one that got air dry on its own, so it has a uneven surface, some areas are darker than the other ones, and this one was heat set, which has a more regular tone everywhere. And the same goes for the pink ones. The one on the top is the one that I uh, heat set, and this one was um, uh, left to air dry, so it has color concentrations in there, and a little bit different shades going on. But you can even color those, so pumpkin seeds, no problem at all. And then we've got this, um, actually like that, how that, that turned out. It's almost dry now, so I can go over it with my finger. I still have one clean finger here. So I'm going to rub over that area uh, to see what happens. And not much of the color comes off. Look at my finger, there's not much much glimmer in there. So it actually, when it sticks to this uh, glossy surface, when you leave it to dry, you can actually add it on surfaces like this too. You will not get a perfect result because it will concentrate on some areas and leave other areas un unfinished. But if you want to do something different, this might be something you want, might want to try out. In the end, not at all um, something that I would toss 
I might even keep this and keep working on this and add some colors and see what happens and do this, uh, add this as a centerpiece to some kind of mixed media project. Looks really interesting. Um, you never know how it, they turn out. You need to keep on trying and testing because that's the fun part also. And then my other wooden pea, wooden wood uh, cork, sorry cork piece. This turned out totally blue, so it's it has so much glimmer and shine on top of it that you can hardly tell that it's a camera shape. But you can definitely also treat cork with with glimmer mist. Works really nicely. Then we've got this uh, raw wood uh, wooden box uh, that I just added some gold on top and look at that shine, that's so pretty. And finally this is the um, stamping stamp block. So this would be the uh, rubber stamp um, piece that you hold and you have the, the rubber, be rubber uh, stamp mounted on this piece. That is that type of wood that I've, I've uh, um, colored in here. Cannot um, tell you at the moment what this type of wood is. I'm going to have to Google it and then add the name there. These are just names that I don't know in English out of heart, so I have to add them to the video. But the result is what is what what counts. So this is the really light shading, and that's the stronger one. And I've left it to air dry. It's not quite dry yet, but it it turns out really nice. So you can add a, like a stain on, on light woods easily with glimmer mists. So that's it, we're through with the video. And then, yeah, sorry, there was this one, I, but I showed it already. So that's the, that's the white paint treated hairbrush leftover piece in wood that I added some gold on top and it only added these spots in here and there. Really nice effect if that is what you're aiming for. But a little bit disappointing that it didn't stick better to this surface. Like I said, I don't think that I added um, gesso here. I think I've worked, uh, pre-treated the surface with uh, regular paint and that's the problem probably. We'll need to test that further and see what happens. But as it is, not totally dis a total disappointment you still got glimmer mist in there but not as much as I would have expected okay so that was the wood experimenting series and for my next video I'm going to do I think metals or plastic and glass we'll see uh, so those are coming up then I've got um, gypsum uh, stones um, shells horn um, all kinds of other materials that I have in my crafting stash and we're going to go through those too shortly to to finish uh, this um, glimmer misting series and and uh, go through as much as uh, possible different types of materials and see how that works with with the glimmer mist and now I just figured out that I forgot to show you the first pieces so this would be the paintbrush air dried and now it's dry and for comparison this is the paint brush heat gun dried surface so I don't know can you tell a difference not much I can't mm, not much of a difference at all here the same this is the heat gun uh, set piece so I just sprayed the color on and then I heat gun, heated it with a heat gun and this I let to air dry. I just sprayed and let it air dry. But basically the result is almost the same except maybe the gold is stronger on this part. On the heat gun heated piece than on the one that I let air dry. That might be a big difference. There, There is some difference. Noticeable there, but that's it. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this wooden uh, series and see you with the next video very soon. Thanks for watching.